So why in terms, you mentioned earlier during the segment education. So do you go and talk to PCPs about this and start talking about more of our bladder health instead of just the prostate? Absolutely. You know, for us, you know, the vision for man versus prostate, it's a garage grown grassroots crusade for us to redefine the BPH care pathway, right? It's going to take all of us. It's going to take a village. But I will tell you, at least here in the Americas, primary care docs are overwhelmed. I just worked with a primary care doc on Saturday and he's like, I don't have time. I need help. You know, I've got 15 other problems I got to take care of in 15 minutes. How am I going to really dive into that? And that's why it's going to take a collaborative effort on all of our parts, primary care physicians, specialists, mid-levels, urologists, industry, academics, right? We're going to all have to work together. So yes, the primary care docs need to be enlightened. We need to help them, I think, with mobile apps or online education, having a campaign that goes a national shout out to Defender Austin Slade, who did some research and reached out to a company. It's going to cost us about $247,000 to try and launch a national campaign. I've, obviously, as a grassroots, we're, we're not there yet, but how do we get the message out directly to the patients so the patients are coming in pre-educated for the primary care doc, pre-educated about the issues, the late stage BPH, when they meet with the urologist, you know, one of our playful hashtags that we really want to get out to patients is hashtag, hey, what about my bladder? We want them pushing the dialogue. And we can do that through collaboration to build communities, whether it's within industry, within online amongst patients, whether it's within academics with the AUA, the EAU, and the NICE, building communities, consistently sharing that message. So like, for example, healthcare industry reps, representatives, there's a defender, Trey Dorman from Neotract asked, hey, what do we do? Well, a very simple thing is start collaborating with other industry companies within diagnostics, can work with devices to share this message. Also in our marketing, we need to be very consistent in showing the bladder being beat up with trabeculations. A great one is when Optolume came out on the front cover of Journal Urology. I was like, yes, if you look at the picture, the bladder has trabeculations. On the academic side, AUA, EAU, NICE, you need to put good pictures of normal bladders versus trabeculated bladders that all urologists can download and put on the websites. Let's get every time a patient comes to a website from a urology practice, they're seeing a beat up bladder. We're consistently sending the same message that, hey, bladder health is what is really a priority, the preservation of bladder health. And then the second thing is internally and externally, we need to challenge the orthodoxy medications. And this is a very important point. Folks ask me, hey, are you anti-medications? Well, no, we're pro-data and we're pro-education. And part of that education is medications, yes, have their role, but not as therapeutic measures. They need to be relegated and reassigned to the category of temporizing measures, similar to a Foley catheter. Guy comes in with stage four retention in the emergency. We temporize the situation with a fully catheter. A man comes in with symptoms, stage two or stage three, right? Overactive bladder, urgent cons. We temporize the situation with medications. Hey, but Mr. Smith, there's a bigger problem going on here. We need data to figure out what needs to happen. And so that's a really important challenge to the orthodoxy. Like medications are not a therapeutic measure, but a temporizing measure. Another one is just the use of language. We talk about benign prostatic hyperplasia in our guidelines, but that's a histology. We need to really get back. Words matter, right? If we use the word obstruction, that word affect that thought affects our actions and affects our habits because obstruction means there must be a solution that means deobstruction. And chemicals don't deobstruct. 